Are you struggling to find or hire the right media buyer? Hiring the wrong person can lead to some real horror stories. And trust me, I know I've been there. In this video, I'm going to teach you about some of my experiences, how to avoid the mistakes I've made, and ultimately what to look for when you're looking to hire a good media buyer. So whether you're working by yourself, you're a small company, startup, or you're a well-established business, finding and hiring the right media buyer could be crucial to your business's long-term success. Let's dive in. Whether it was as a digital marketing manager at an agency in Seattle, or an intern to CMO at Traffic and Funnels, to an agency owner at Heman, to ultimately CEO at Bad Marketing, I have spent my career developing, finding, and nurturing great marketers that can produce amazing results for our clients. Throughout this time, I've seen what both a terrible marketer can do for a business, but also what a fantastic one can do for the business's growth, stability, and profits. And just before we jump into the video, I wanna make sure I'm not assuming anything, and let's go ahead and go over what a media buyer is, or for the context of this video, what do I mean when I say a media buyer? When I'm talking about a media buyer, I mean someone that you are paying or employing to essentially run the advertising on digital marketing platforms like social media or Google. And many companies will treat media buyers differently. Some of them only use a media buyer to simply place the ad, but they're not writing the copy or generating the creative or they're not doing the market research. And they're just using that person to press buttons in the ad account. But mostly what I hire for and what this video is going to be about is how to find a media buyer that does more than just push buttons in an ad account, but they also understand marketing psychology, they do research, they can write copy, and sometimes even do creative. In my companies, I've really looked to hire and then develop someone into what we call a unicorn, which means they are both data focused, but they also are creative or can understand marketing principles to engineer better advertising to get better results. I found that if you can figure out a way to both find or train and develop these people, they become absolute rock stars for generating revenue for your company. The first tip when looking for a great media buyer for your company is to first define what you're looking for and define your needs. Yes, you can find a lot of great job descriptions online or templates, but ultimately what I recommend you do is to connect with other people who have similar companies, see if they have job descriptions or references for what they've used to hire media buyers. And then ultimately, don't just lean on the templatized frameworks or job descriptions or roles and responsibilities that you can see online. Because if you do this, you're going to get a massive amount of people applying that may or may not actually have what you're looking for, but they thought that you were looking for them because you use such a generic job description or roles and responsibilities that you found online. The more information or custom tailored the information is that you can put on the front end will limit the amount of people who actually start applying for your job. And you'll notice that the people who apply for your job are much closer to what you're actually looking for. This can be about both either the discussion we just had when it comes to what do you want them to actually do? Do you want them to write copy? Do you want them to understand creative? Do you want them to be able to work with another team? Or do you just want them to press buttons? But the next thing is, is there context or information or education that you want them coming into your company already having. Meaning, have they not just worked with a company like yours in the same industry, but what about size? What about spend? What about the type of products? What about other companies that operate similar to yours, whether you are hybrid in office or remote? Outlining these things before you actually list an ad to start getting interviews or applications is very, very important so that it helps you weed through applications and say no a lot quicker. But this also creates a reference point for you to compare when you are actually in the final stages of hiring a person. Even if we like them, do they actually have what our company is looking for? So take the extra time on the front end because it'll save you hours on the back end from being on pointless interviews or sifting through applications that are not relevant to you. This leads right into tip number two, which is looking for relevant experience. It's not just about getting the right applications, it's also asking the right questions when you're in the interview process. Make sure you're asking the media buyer about their past experience, either in the industry or niche that your company operates out of, and make sure that they are giving you specific stories and examples of what they've done in those industries. Not just about what companies did you work for, but asking them to tell you about a specific promotion or a campaign that they ran that may be similar to campaigns or promotions that you run. You don't need specific results, but tell us if you actually hit the KPI or you're on target, how much did you exceed the KPI or how much were you missing the target? Ask them about the adaptions that they had to do inside of that campaign, or is it that every campaign they seem to launch always works? Side note, if everyone just says that every campaign they launch always does well, they're lying to you and you should move on right away. 
This is also where you can start asking the media buyer about their favorite parts about running campaigns for this specific industry or niche, or what is the worst part or the highest challenge that they've experienced while running campaigns for this type of business. This will not only give you an understanding for how well they know your business or industry, but you'll actually be able to compare if you feel like their feedback is truthful or accurate. When I'm interviewing a media buyer, I'm not just looking for can they answer my questions, but I'm actually looking to the depth or complexity or how much thought I feel they've actually put into this answer. Because realistically, a great media buyer is not someone who will just take a piece of copy and creative and launch it and let it rip. This is someone who actually thinks about the business. They spend time pondering how to improve things. And when they're spending time pondering, this means that their answers will actually feel much more thought through. You can tell that they put time into thinking about this or how to solve that problem or how to maximize the solution much more than others who just, hey, this is my job and I just push buttons. This leads to the next very important thing when it comes to tip number two, which is always asking for references. Make sure you are doing this. It's worth the extra half hour. Make sure you call their references and ask them what their opinions were about this employee. What were their strengths? What were their weaknesses? I can't tell you how many times I've gotten on a call with someone I've interviewed and I thought that they could be really great just to call the reference and realize that none of the information they told me on the interview was accurate. You might consider yourself a lie detector and a great people reader, but at the end of the day, if you just take 30 minutes, you save you and your company a lot of heartache. And the next tip, tip number three, is making sure you verify their technical knowledge. Now, I don't just mean, do they know how to press buttons in the ad account, which this is actually something you'd be surprised at how many media buyers don't actually know the buttons in the ad account, but this also goes into what other tools or information or technical knowledge would they need to know to actually perform this job well? If your company uses third-party attribution tools, which you should be, does this media buyer actually have experience or understanding of how to use those platforms? Example, Hyros or Triple Whale or Northbeam. Especially in today's world where the data attribution is so weak, a media buyer needing to know how to use the third-party tracking attribution tools is a necessity. If they don't use anything else or haven't used anything else in the past, most likely, this means that they don't have that much experience in media buying, or if they have, it's on a very low level. Which, if you're a business that only needs low level experience or technical skills, then this might be fine. But for most businesses, if they don't have third-party tracking attribution tool understandings, then most likely this person will not help your company scale. This is also where I like to start testing media buyers on how relevant or up to date they are on the media buying platforms. Example, right now in 2024, I'm asking them about their experience with Performance Max on Google, or I'm asking them their opinions on the AI optimizations for creative on Meta, or the AI optimized headlines. Platforms are always changing and the best media buyers in the world are obsessive about finding the new features and testing them to see if they can have a competitive edge. And once I've kind of gauged their experience or skill level on the interview, this leads to tip number four, which is always putting them to the test. And there's really two ways I like to go about testing a media buyer in the hiring process. The first part is actually on the interview. I wanna actually run them through scenarios and see how fast can their brain respond to test and being under pressure when I ask them a question on the spot. Media buying is a high stress job that you've gotta be able to react quickly to and it can't stress you out. So I'm watching them as I'm asking random questions or running them through a scenario to see how they react. Can their brain keep up with me? Can it provide clear and logical explanations or responses to my questions? And finally, is this an area where I feel like they start pulling stuff out of their ass? Does it feel like they're making stuff up? I'm almost always looking for this breaking point and I'll keep digging until I find it. And so ultimately, they're either gonna start BSing me or they're gonna be honest. These are all great indicators for me of not just are they a good media buyer, but also are they a good culture fit? Can I trust them? When it comes to media buying, you're handling your client's capital or your own company's capital. It is your money and you're trusting them to spend it wisely, to be good stewards of it. And so if I feel like as soon as things get chaotic or you don't know an answer, you're just gonna lie to me or start pulling stuff out of your ass, that's a big red flag to me and I don't think I can trust you in my company. The next thing I'm looking for is how fast can they respond? Because media buying is always spending money 24 seven, this means you have to make decisions and react quickly. It's not something that you can just go away for a week and consider and ponder because if that campaign's still running, it's still spending money. I need to know that your brain can start problem solving right away. And I don't need you to have the perfect answer, but I also want to watch and see how your brain is going about solving that problem. 
does it work systematically? Does it feel like you're reverse engineering the problem to break it down to core principles? Do you have a good method for solving problems? That's what media buying and advertising is. And so I'm looking for how they're going about solving it just as much as I am if they can solve the problem I give them. These could be simple things like pulling up an ad and asking them their thoughts or how would they improve this ad or showing them a landing page of saying, this is what this landing page converts at. Why do you think the conversion rate is so low or why do you think it's so high? This could also be situations where you pull open an ad account or ask them to walk you through how they'd set up a campaign structure for testing new creative, or what are their thoughts about either testing broad, segmented, or stacked-based campaigns. Asking these types of questions, if nothing else, just gets you into their mind so you can understand how they think. The next way to ultimately test a media buyer that I love doing during a hiring process is actually having them do a project if they pass my first interview. This can be as simple as me sending over to them, this is the brand, this is the landing page we're gonna run ads to, and if you wanted to provide copy, meaning you don't expect them to write, then I could provide that as well. And then I asked them to record a Loom video and walk me through you creating this campaign for this client or this brand. You've gotta make sure that you give them their total daily spend budget and also be clear of, hey, do you want a top of funnel campaign only or do you also expect remarketing to be there? But I want them to do this on Loom so I can actually watch them building out this campaign. Not only do I wanna see if I think their campaign setup is sound or logical, but also I wanna see how fast do they move through this process. Is it clear that they know where the buttons are and they've done this hundreds if not thousands of times? If it feels like they're needing to read each section or they're considering each step of the campaign creation process, this also is a sign to me that they are not experienced and they have not created that many campaigns. Sometimes if you wanna get clever here, I'll actually leave something important out that any media buyer would need to know if they're actually creating the campaign. Meaning, sometimes I might not actually give them a link to run the ad to, or I won't tell them whether or not I wanted it to be top of funnel or remarketing, or I won't tell them the daily spend budget. Advanced media buyers would want to know this question because we would set up the campaigns differently depending on how much money we were actually spending in that campaign. This is a really good tactic to try. But if you're relatively new to hiring a media buyer, I would say leave this part out and just give them all the information they would need on the front end so that you're giving them the best chance at creating a successful campaign. Now, an important note to have on this project that you would give them after an interview is to give them a time constraint. Ultimately in the hiring process, we want to take our time, but we also need to hire fast. Be also very clear about what you expect the campaign or the end result to look like. Meaning, I expect this account to have one top of funnel campaign and one remarketing. Each campaign will have a thousand dollar a day budget and I want at least three top of funnel body copies and headlines and I want at least two remarketing body copies and headlines. This just gives me the clear picture and them of what I'm looking for the end result to be. And this gives me a chance to see, can they follow my instructions very well? Now, this leads to tip number five. I'm looking at how creative they are. What I'm looking for is, can they think outside the box? Does it feel like they didn't just want to turn in something vanilla? Because at the end of the day, when it comes to media buying and advertising on social media or any platform, vanilla does nothing. I want to see if they've got some spice in the things that they created. As a media buyer, you are the boots on the ground when it comes to ad performance. You see all of the data every single day. That also makes them the best person to give feedback to other people. Even if they're not writing their own copy or producing their own creative, they're probably working with someone who does. And if that media buyer doesn't have any level of creativity, they will not be helpful when coming up with new ideas, new angles, or even observations to send back to their teams that work with them. One thing that you can do if they make it to the second interview is take a look at the examples or the campaigns they created and ask them why they went with that idea or why they went with that angle or why did you write the copy like that? This not only will let you know if they've put effort or energy into creating that campaign, but this also gives you another insight into how this person thinks. Why did they create the thing that they created or does it feel like they just did it because? 
Media buying on social media is all about getting someone's attention, retaining it, and building up enough curiosity or desire for them to go somewhere else and complete the conversion. The media buyer should be creative enough to think outside of the box of when things aren't working, how can they adapt, pivot, or redeploy a new idea to achieve the KPIs and the results that you and them are looking for. This leads to tip number six, which is assessing their culture fit and communication skills. I can tell you I've hired several amazing media buyers that just never worked out at my company. And it wasn't because they weren't smart or skilled, it was because when I hired them, I was not ensuring that they were a proper fit to my culture. And when a good person, no matter how skilled or talented, is put into a culture that does not align with them, not only will they feel it, but everyone around them will too. When it comes to media buyers, there's a couple things you have to look out for. It's either A, you have to look out for an extreme level of laziness because they maybe join the job or career with the idea that all they'd have to do is sit in a chair, press buttons, and spend other people's money. These ones are fairly easy to catch in interviews based on the cadence of their speech, their tonality. Are they leaned in? Does it feel like they're interested? Does it feel like their mind is working fast or does it feel slow? But the other thing you have to be careful for when it comes to media bars is ego. Ego is the killer of so many media bars because naturally media bars typically have higher cognitive ability. They're smart people. And when you have smart people, sometimes they run into ego issues where they don't wanna to listen to anyone else, they don't wanna respect authority, or they are not coachable and they don't want to adapt. But in the world of media buying, it's adapting and evolving all the time. And so you must hire someone who is coachable, who is willing to adapt, who is willing to say that the strategy they've been running for two years or three years no longer works and now they need to find a new path. But also, you want to make sure that other people on your team will have fun working with them. I can't tell you what your culture values are, but you just want to make sure that this person would align with whatever culture values you've established and that their energy would mix well with your team members. Some things I like to do to assess this area of an applicant is to ask them things about what do they like to do in their free time? What are their hobbies? Did they play sports growing up? For my companies and in my experience, hiring great media buyers, they typically have some similarities with what they've done in the past. They've typically played some kind of competitive sports while growing up and or they do some level of physical activity like combat sports now. This could be kind of weird and maybe it's just me, but I have found that media buying as a career is quite literally a job that you take punches in the face all day long because you'll launch a campaign, it doesn't work and you've got to find another way to make it work. And you're doing this over and over and over again, whether it's compliance issues, an account going down, a client not liking something, or the algorithm changes and all your best winning campaigns take a dive. To be a good media buyer, you've got to be able to push through that and not lose your head or get overly stressed. And so I love it when I see someone who says, I do jujitsu right now, or I do X, Y, Z, that tells me that they're already accustomed to pushing through pain or challenge or obstacles and still win the game. The next thing is that they are a consistent learner. I'm looking for students, people who are consistently curious about the world around them or why things work the way they work or how to improve. The best media buyers I've ever hired have always been huge students of past marketers like Ogilvy and Schwartz or Clayton Makepeace, but also there's people they actively study now to get better at their skill. I also want to know how good at communication are they. Media buyers can be an interesting one because you can find some media buyers that are fantastic at their job, but a little socially awkward. Again, this depends on what you've defined for yourself at the very beginning of what you're looking for or need. Is this person going to be on calls with clients? Are they going to be client facing? Are they going to be leading a team? These are important things to understand and know because realistically, if someone is showing up to a call with me and it feels like their brain is going at about 10% of the speed that mine does, then either A, I don't think they're going to be able to keep up with the work that happens around us, or B, they just frankly will annoy me if I work with them. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person or not good at their job. It just means that our working relationship is not going to be great in the long run. You can evaluate communication styles from both tonality, how they're saying what they're saying, cadence, meaning the speed at which they're saying it, or also just competency. Does it feel like they know the language of English well, or do you see consistent mistakes in how they're communicating? I look for this because I also want to understand if they can write copy. And if they don't know how to communicate well orally, then really Realistically, in the copywriting sense, they won't be that great either. And the final thing that I look for when it comes to culture or communication 
fits is the way they show up to the call. Does it feel like they've actually prepared for this call? Does it feel like they just threw on some clothes, didn't brush their hair? How messy is the background of the video? Which are all things that people consider when they're taking something seriously. And there you have it. There are the six tips that I have for you if you're looking to hire a world-class media buyer. Let me know in the comments some of the success stories or horror stories that you've had when hiring a media buyer. If you like content like this or you want to nerd out more about marketing, copywriting, psychology, or leadership, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.